Alléluia. 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 Giving all honor and praise, respect, glory, and allegiance to our God and our King. The Holy One, the only one in Israel, we all must say hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. How y'all feeling, brothers and sisters? How y'all feeling, brothers and sisters? The Most High God is great. The Most High God is amazing. The Most High God is great to us as a people that are, quote unquote, in the land of our captivity. We're supposed to be slaves. We're supposed to be down and out. But the Most High God made a way for us. Once again, he's made a way for us to be strong, to be able to keep our days, to be able to keep the holy days. Don't take those things for granted, brothers and sisters. We're not secretly meeting on Shabbat. We're here boldly praising the almighty God. We must give thanks and praise to his high and holy name. Brothers and sisters, we're going to continue with the same vein with the Psalms. I want to thank the Most High God for my life, the lives of my family, the lives of my Nashim and my children. I want to thank the Most High God for the time he gave my father, Cohen Levy, for my Ima who is here and my Emi who's home watching. I thank the Most High God for my brothers and my sisters. We're going into Psalms 91. And then we're going to do Psalms 92. Psalms 92 is a psalm that we do every Shabbat day. It's a psalm for the Shabbat day. So all my Hebrew readers, I want y'all to get your books out for when we get to that psalm. But for now, we're going to start with Psalms 91. Psalm 91, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O thou that, o thou that dwellest in the cupboard, the cupboard of the Most High, and abidest in the shadow of the Almighty. It said, O thou that dwellest in the covert of the Most High. So I had to look up covert because there's two different meanings for it. There's one that means like an undercover operation. And then there's this word right here that means like a safe haven for animals. A safe haven for, for people that's trying to get trapped or things that are trying to get trapped. So it says, O thou that dwellest in the covert of the Most High and abidest in the shadow of the Almighty. That's us. We are dwelling in the cover of the Most High. The Most High God is keeping his safety net around us. He watches over us. Make sure that we get to our destination safely and back home safely. Make sure that when we're out, our homes are in safety. The Most High God watches over us. Even when you don't realize that God is watching you, Yah is watching you. And that's the greatness and the mercy of the Almighty God. I could tell you stories for days of how I saw danger and, didn't, and went that way. And the Most High God said, no, 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 no. Go this way. Go that way. I, we just had the memorial of 9-11. I talk about this story all the time. I was on the A train during 9-11. I was going to meet up with my nephew, Coom, to go play some drums. And I'm on the A train. And it stops right at Chamber Street, World Trade Center. I was on the A train. And it, I heard the, the first airplane hit. Boom. And people said, oh, come on, these trains. They always messing up. Y'all know how MTA is. Y'all know how MTA is. Terrible. Terrible system, MTA. Horrible. Right? So I'm thinking it's the same thing. It's the terrible train day again. So I said, well, at the time, I wasn't working. So I said, I'm going back home. I got off the train across the platform, and I went back to Brooklyn. Then the train messed up again at Notion. So I just got off the train and walked home. And I said, what's going on? I look at the news, and they're saying that this thing happened. Now, mind you, this is the second time I missed this thing. In 1994, with the first towers hit, I went to school right there. I went to high school of economics and finance. My high school was literally a part of the World Trade Center. And the Most High said, don't go to school that day. When I tell you the Most High God put you in the cover, right. he watches over you even when you don't realize it. Right. What, what happened? You guess what? My parents wasn't mad I didn't go to school that day. I, just, I didn't tell nobody. I just didn't go to school. So I'm grateful to the Most High that he saved my life that day. He saved my life the other day with 9-11 because guess what? If I stayed on the train and did whatever everybody else was saying, oh, I'm going to be late for work or late for this, and keep training and keep going on, I would have been trapped and buried under there. How many people died from that 9-11? Over 3,000? Brothers and sisters, the Most High God keeps you in the cover of his wings, and you don't even realize it. Let's read. I will say of Jehovah, who is my refuge and my fortress, Yah, and who I, whom I trust, right. that he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler 
and from the noise some pestilence. The most high God watches over us. He guides us. He shields us. He protects us. Sometimes we say and we rattle it off. God, you God shield and protect us from danger, harm, seen and unseen. Brothers and sisters, think about what you're saying. He's guiding you and shielding you from danger, harm, seen and unseen. God watches you, brothers and sisters. You know there's shootouts all the time that don't make the news? Do y'all know that there's people that get killed out here that never made the news? There's things that happen in this city, sometimes right next to you, that don't even make the news. I was on the, I did overtime one day a couple of weeks ago, and I was on the phone with my brother Ooze. I said, Ooze, you heard that? He was like, heard what? I said, Ooze, I'm right by your house. A house exploded. He was like, I didn't hear it. A whole house exploded. It looked like a movie. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And the neighbor next door to the left and the neighbor next door to the right was unharmed. And it was buildings, that houses that are attached. So that shows you that y'all could be merciful when you want to be merciful. That's why we got to be on God's side. Because you want when that mercy to come through, y'all please show me some mercy. Please keep that mercy around me and around my family. Let's read some more. He will cover thee with his pinions, and under his wings shalt thou take refuge. His truth is a shield and a buckler. When I read this, I think about airplanes. He said, he will cover thee with his pinions, and under his wings shalt thou take refuge. You have no control over an airplane. You have no control over cars either. But when you're in that air, I feel like you're more vulnerable. At least you feel more vulnerable. You're in the air. You're in God's skies. You have no business there. I'm serious. We have no business there. He said, God made man right, but he has sought out what? Many inventions. And that's one of those inventions we don't got no business being a part of. Being up in those skies with the clouds and you can see birds and everything that's up there in the clouds. You grow. Oh, we're going to fly about... 200,000 feet in the sky and we're going to run through the clouds and if you hear feel a little bump and that's just the clouds and the rain going and they're saying it's so calm and I'm thinking y'all please help me please that's why I'm one of the ones that clap at the end of a flight I don't care what nobody say when that thing when those wheels go boom 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 I'll be like yeah yeah yo. people be like I'll be listen I'll clap at the end of a good movie, but I'll definitely clap at the end of a nice flight. Told out your hoe for letting me. Listen, when as soon as it go, boom. Y'all know what I'm talking about, that. The wheels go, and you be like, yes. Told out your hoe. Yeah, happy. Especially one of those long flights. And then you got people that are asleep through a whole flight. I, I can't do that. Because every little bump, I'm like, yeah, is it my time? And I talk to God. I tell God, yeah, you know, I'm not very extravagant. You don't have to kill me in the air. If you're going to do it, you can keep me. Do it to me regular. I don't know. In my sleep. I don't need no extravagant death, oh God. I tell God that because I don't. I want to listen. That thing, the most high is so great to us. We don't even realize it. You're flying in the air. And guess what? You got to trust that pilot that you don't know. And if you watch that Denzel movie, you kind of second guess these pilots a little bit. When my man said, I drink Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I said, this man was drunk every flight, all the time. So you got to think, hey, you want to greet the, the, the pilot. Hello, sir. Are you all right? Can I see your eyes? <laughs> You know, they dilated or whatever. I need some medical terms. I need to know what's going on with you. Did you have a bad day today? Yeah. Most High is great. So we put our trust in the Most High because he's the only one that could get us to our destination safely and back home safely and wherever you go. And listen, the cause is just as dangerous. You know, the other day on the FDR, a lady went up the wrong way on the FDR because she was drunk. How you go the wrong way? Now, I can see you swerving a little bit, but she went the opposite way on the FDR drive. Killed the baby. You see what I'm saying? So when the Most High God is protecting you on those roads, when you get to your destination, you better say, Told I Yehoah. The first thing I do when I walk in that house, Told I Yehoah. Told I Yehoah, because nothing's wrong. I am got here safe. 
when I leave the house, I say my prayers. Before I turn on my, when I turn on the car, before I pull off, it's, y'all please sing, sing a little song of praise to so y'all please. Because anything can happen at any time. Let's read some more. Verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. That's right. Nor of the arrow that flies by day. We didn't reach this yet. Because we go out and we live in these quote unquote hoods. And they shooting and they carrying on. And the terror by night is out there. And we got to pray for our children. Listen, I don't know how my parents did it. They didn't even check on us. You go out, all right, y'all be good. Come back in when you come back in. Now I say he fought, I'll be like, hey, you, you all right? Yo, you good? He be like, yo, one time his phone died? Whew. Panic more. I was halfway dressed. Because I'm about to go out there. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. And then all of a sudden, bling. Oh, my phone died. Boy, is you crazy? Charge your phone before you leave. That's responsible. Then you go through the responsibility talk. That's responsible. <laughs> you sound like your parents. Ain't that something? You're, not, you're irresponsible. You see what I'm saying? That's why I don't let you do nothing. <laughs> but God is good. You want that safety over your children. These schools, nothing guaranteed. There was just another school shooting. I can't even imagine that feeling. You send your child to school to learn, and they call you talking about, I'm trapped in the room because they're shooting. Brothers and sisters, if we don't call on this God, I don't know what y'all doing, but we got to stay close to God. Let's read. Of the pestilence that walketh in darkness, mm -hmm. nor of the destruction that <laughs> wasteth at noonday. noonday. Uh -huh. A thousand may fall at thy side. That's right. And ten thousand at thy right hand. Right. It shall not come nigh thee. It's not going to come near you. So it's a blessing and it's sad to hear, but guess what? It is sad to hear, but you hear about these school shooters, but told I, yeah, it don't be our children. It don't be our children. Our children are safe. Our children are watched over. The Most High God watches over us. Even with the, the, the adults that's... We got teachers here. It could be anybody, but the Most High shows his mercy to us. And I truly believe the Most High shows his mercy to those who call upon him with a whole heart, with their soul, and with their might. The ones that call on God with... with being true to themselves and saying, listen, y'all, please watch over me. I tell God, listen... The cheat code to praising to praying to the Almighty God is to tell God, listen, yeah, I praise you. They don't. I'm serious. When I'm ready to get a job or I'm trying to ta pass a test, yeah, I praise your name. These people don't. So please let me let me pass. I'm not cursing them. I'm just bigging myself up because I pray to the one who is in control. So if I pray to the one who's in control and they're not. I'm at a cheat code. I'm at an advantage. So, y'all, they didn't keep Shabbat last week, but I did. I never let, broke Shabbat. Please, Jehovah, answer my prayers. Cause me to pass this test. Amen? Amen. And I pass that test. Or whatever it is, I get that job. Whatever you doing in life, no matter what, big, small, great, whatever, indifferent, pray to God. You got to pray to God and pray in specifics. You know that you don't want just to pass. If you say, God, can I pass the test? You might just, just pass. Ask God for flying colors. Ask God, let me ace this exam. I want to ace this exam. Please, y'all, whatever it is you're going through, say your prayers. Even if you're going through stuff in your personal life with your spouse or whatever, y'all got to learn to say, yeah, please help this situation. Whether it's you or whether it's her, whether it's her, whether it's you, please, Yahuwah, help us. Because I don't know what to do. I'm going to strangle her. No, don't say that. Say, yeah, please help me. Help me to deal with this attitude. Help me to deal with this stress. Help me to deal with whatever. No, pray to God with everything, brothers and sisters. Learn to get, get on your knees. Learn to say, hey, Isha, we got to pray about this. Hey, son, come on, let's say a prayer. I don't know. You must have lost your mind, son. You, you going crazy. I, we got to pray. Pray that. Pray. Let's read some more. Verse 8, only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the recompense of the wicked. Brothers and sisters, he said, only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the recompense of the wicked. Sometimes you see the bad things that's happening in this world. You have to say, yeah, I'm grateful that you didn't bring that, 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 that craziness over here, that wickedness. Listen, school shootings, they're happening every year, every few months now. 
every other day a school shooting. And it's not like they're shooting one child. They're shooting multiple children. They're calling it what? A mass shooting. That is a problem. And they're still not seeing anything wrong with the gun laws. So, therefore, you got to pray to the most high. And you got to use wisdom. And you could take that for what, you, for what it is. Use wisdom, brothers and sisters. When I say that, I mean get the licenses that you need. That's wisdom. Take the necessary courses that you need to protect yourself and your family. You understand what I'm saying, right? All right. <laughs> Let's read. For thou hast made Jehovah, who is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Mm -hmm. There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy tent. That's what we want. We want the plagues that's out there. The most high said that the, the diseases of Egypt that he will put upon all the nations round about us. But these diseases are starting to hit us. The cancers, the high blood pressures, the AIDS, the HIVs, the, all the different things. All the STDs that's out there. Y'all keep those things away from us. Please. Save us from all of these things. Because it's going crazy out here. That C word. I'm so tired of that C word. And I feel like there's a, a cure. I feel like they know something. But they're not telling us. But guess what? The most high in the way did tell us. And the way that we eat. He told us what to eat. He told us how to eat. So the things that's plaguing us is the things that we're putting in our bodies. We got to change that stuff. I know we say, oh, I'm just eating chicken from that place, but they also using pork in that place, so you can't eat in that place. I know we don't like to hear about the dietary law, but the dietary law is what's going to save us. We can't put anything in our body. I know you're just getting a, 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 a turkey and cheese sandwich from the bodega, but guess what? You see what's going on with the what they call it? The, the, the basad, listeria? Listeria? And, and it's all in this boar's head. They just shut boar's head down. I just saw that. Because they were spraying some stuff on the basad that they shouldn't have been spraying on it. That just came out. That they were spraying something on it. Now that's crazy. But so now you go in the ark, yo, let me get a turkey and cheese sandwich. And ark is only selling boar's head in the hood. He don't sell nothing else but boar's head. And Listeria is what's, caught, what's killing us, and the boar's head is what the problem is. So now, why only in the neighborhoods that we live in is boar's head all in the bodega? Every Muslim store sells boar's head. Muslims back in the day didn't even sell swine. Now they sell swine. I looked in the store the other day, and I know the brother's Muslim, and I looked at the bag of chips, and what do he have? Pork rinds. I said, yo, Ak, what's up with this? Brother, that's all they could do. Same thing, Papi, Papi. Brother, they giving you this. They telling you, boys had this, boys had that. And I tell people when they say, "Let me get a turkey cheese sandwich," I said, "What kind of boss saw is that?" Boys had the cheese, boys had everything, boys had, and they said they spraying stuff with it. They telling you what it is. Boar's head is what is a boar? Okay, okay. I just checked it. I just checked it. It's a wild pig, right? So why would you even want to eat from that? Even if they saying it's turkey. I don't want boar's head turkey. That's crazy to me. Yeah. It's like eating pig ice cream. If the if the brand was pig, piggy. You want Miss Piggy ice cream with a big oink oink on the face. And you're like, well, I'm just eating Neapolitan. <laughs> it's just cookies and cream. Rum raisin. That's, that's one of my favorites. I like rum raisin. But I'm not eating nothing called Piggy's ice cream. Boar's head. That is straight up swan. It has a picture of a pig on it. <laughs> Let's read on. For he will give his angels charge over thee to right? keep thee in all thy ways. He said, for he will give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. You know that there's angels that we don't know about, brothers and sisters. That's why my Abba used to always talk about the angels of protection. I never understood, but now I understand. Those angels that the Most High God has that you don't see, that you don't know about, the angels of protection. There's angels that the Most High God put in your midst that you don't even realize it. And sometimes they might even tell you, yo, yo, go that way. That could be, that's an angel.
made you the most high. And then you turn around again, that person's far gone. Yah was sending you a messenger, and you didn't realize it. But it's not for you to realize, it's for you to listen and take heed and say, told our Yehovah for sending that angel to let me go that way. Let's read. They shall bear thee upon their hands, uh -huh. lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and asp. The young lion and the serpent shalt thou trample under feet. This you can't even imagine. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the ass. The young lion and the serpent shalt thou trample under foot. Brothers and sisters, I say it all the time. We're supposed to have dominion over the animals. We're supposed to have dominion over the animals. That is a part of our, our blessing. But we see a little mouse today and we scattering out of here. Bang, everybody gone. The men too. I said the men too. I know a brother that called rats dinosaurs because he, so, he said, they was, yeah, hey, hey, man, they got dinosaurs in there. I said, what you talking about, chief? He said, they, they got dinosaurs in there. He talking about rats. So you got brothers that is running up out of here. Let a, let, a, let a mouse, this big, run around this right mouse right here. Everybody in here is out of here. But we supposed to have dominion over the animals. How could we have dominion if we can't even be scared of a little mouse? And when I tell you we supposed to have dominion, I mean you supposed to tell an elephant, stop. A big elephant say, hey, do not move. And they not supposed to. I really, listen, listen. I'm telling you, I'm going to do it. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it with pit bulls to where I've ran into pit bulls and they got loose and they got to me and I said, you better go ahead. You better go ahead. I also pack a firearm, so <laughs> I wouldn't try that with it. But listen, I try it with a lion because I got dominion over the lion. I'm telling y'all something. She said without the egg dot, why, I got, why I can't have my egg dot? <laughs> no, I'm going to have my egg dot. <laughs> I'm going to have my sword with me. Listen here, lion. Stand down. Yo, they will stand down. You got dominion. New York rats are different. <laughs> You know, but think about this. When the Most High God said that, um, he said he would use his, his, his elements and his forces against our enemies. Can you imagine the Most High saying, rats stand up and take over? Yeah, that, like a plague. Think, think, exactly. Think about the plagues in Egypt when he sent locusts and he sent frogs. How many of y'all like frogs? Frogs just all in your basar, all in your cereal, just hopping out. Just frogs just everywhere. Imagine that. Imagine the roaches. And I'm not, I'm talking about serious roaches. The cockroaches, the ones that jump up and fly. Water bugs, yeah, those. God is in control over all of that. What about these new red things that keep flying around? What they call the guy? Oh, wow. Lantern flies. I never could remember the name of them. Lantern flies. Where did they come from? They wasn't here in 1990. <laughs> China. <laughs> They're eating animals. They're eating pets and cats. That guy's an idiot, man. <laughs> that guy is retarded. Hey, and I don't, I don't talk politics, but goodness gracious, that guy is retarded. Goodness, that guy said they're eating pets and animals. I, you know these people, and this is just a side note, they were so mad this week at that debate. I got text messages in my group chat talking about, well, you know Kamala had these earrings on. And the earrings are H1 volume somethings. And she could hear everything that they, that they were telling her. And that's how she was able to win. They actually sent this thing around. That's how angry they are. Because that sister dusted him in a debate. She's a prosecutor. What do you expect? He has a third grade education. What do you really expect? 
What do you seriously? What do you really expect? She's gonna dust him when it comes down to the lingo and the talk. He, no, he don't want to go back in that round with her. But when the Most High God puts that in your spirit, you can't. De- they can't debate us. Can you imagine some of our, our Malcolm X going against somebody like that right now? Malcolm X would make that man look retarded. My Abba would run circles around this guy. Be like, he'll ask him, so Donald, are you dumb or are you stupid? And he would try and figure out which one he was, dumb or stupid. Dumb Donald. Dumb Donald. <laughs> or are you stupid, Donald? Pick one. And he will pick one. This is the stuff that we got to deal with. That's why when it says our hope coming from Jehovah who made heaven and earth, that's only where our hope comes from. Our help comes from Yah. If we were thinking that you relying on these people to protect you, then you got the wrong message today. Yah is our only help. Yah is our only king, and he's only our savior. Brothers and sisters, we have nothing else out here. Whether you voting or not, I don't care about none of that. What I'm telling you is that Yah is king, and that that's who we got to rely on in this whole craziness that's going on in the world. Let's read some more. Verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, Therefore will I deliver him. Uh-huh. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Right. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Right. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. Right. With long life will I satisfy him and make him to behold my salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 92, Hold verse... On. Hold on, Amos. We're going to go to 90, Psalms 92. So now, all my Hebrew readers, if you have your book in Hebrew... We're going to go through this nice and slow. I'm going to read it. We're going to read it nice and slow in Hebrew. This is a song that we do every single Shabbat. And my goal and my dream is for us to be able to recite these things in Hebrew and be able to flow through it. And I mean flow through it. I'm going to flow through it fast first, but I'm not going to go too fast. I want you all to hear how you pronounce everything. But my goal and our goal is to be able to speak our language. And the things that we can speak, we should be able to speak it. So this is Psalm 92 that we do every week. It will be a blessing if we could do it in Hebrew. So it starts like this. Mismo Sir Layom HaShabbat. A psalm for the Shabbat day, right? Tov lehodot la Yehoa. Uzamir leshinka el yom. Lehagid babo kwe kasteka. We umunat ka bale lot. Ale asor we ale nevel. Ale higayom be kino. Kishemak tani yoho befa aleka. Be ma ase yadeka ara nein. Ma God lu ma aseka Yehoa, me old am ku maksh for teka. Ish ba lo ye da uksil lo yavin et zot. Bifroak le shaim ke mo et sev, wa ya ti tu ko po ale a wing. Le hi sham dam ade ad, wa ata maron le ho le olam Yehoa. Ki hi ne oive ka Yehoa, ki hi ne oive ka yove du. Yit par du ko po ale a wing, wa tarem kir em kwarni, beloti besheren wesh be re anan. Wetebi eni beshurai, bequamim, alai mereim, tish ma na eyes nai, zadik katamar ye frak, ke eren bava non yish gay. Shetulim be bait yeho, be katro elohenu yafri ku. O ye nuvum be seva, de shenim we ra ananim ye hiu, le hagi ki ya sha yeho, suri we lo al la tabo. It's just to me sounds so much pretty in Hebrew. It sounds so beautiful in Hebrew, brothers and sisters. So y'all ready to try it with me? We're going to go nice and slow. Kindergarten slow? Kindergarten slow, okay. Y'all ready? We're going to start from Tov, all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tov lehadot la Yehoah. Uzar me le shimka el yon. Lehagid babo kwe kasteka. We emunat ka baleilot. Ale asor we ale navel ale higayon bekino ki shemak tani yahoa befa aleka be ma ase yadeka arane ma gadlu ma aseka yahoa me old amku makshfoteka ish ba ar lo yeda uksil lo yavin et zot. Beef roak, reshaim, kemo et sev, weyat zi tu, ko po ale awen, lehisham dam, ade ad, we ata 
Marum le Olam Yahoa. Ki he ne oiveka Yahoa. Ki he ne oiveka Yove do. Yeet pardu ko po ale awain. Wetarem kir aim kwarni. Baloti beshemen re anan. Watebi eni beshurai. Bakwamim alai merein. Tish ma na az nai. Zadik katamar yifrak. Keeren bavanon yishge. Shetulim beve yehoah. Bekatro elohenu yafriku. O yenuvun beseva. Deshenim wera anim yihiu. Lehagi ki. Yashar Yehoah, Suri Welo Aula Tabo. Now, Suri, who knows what that is? My rock. My rock. We sing that at the end of the benediction, right? Suri Wego Ali, my rock and my redeemer. So that's the, the song. We're going to go through it now. But we got to get to where we can read these things in the Ivory and get used to it. So we could get up here and say, Tov Yeho Dot La Yeho Uza Men Le Shim Kai El Yom. Le Hagi Babo Kei Kaste Kawe Munach Kabe Le Lot. Like that. All right? Let's go to 92, Amos. Psalm 92. A song for the Shabbat day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it says, It is a good. Hold on, Amos. It says a psalm. A song. It says a psalm. A song for the Shabbat day. So this is actually something that was singing. They're singing this. Now, they, I don't know if they're rapping it. I don't know if they're singing it. But it was a song to praise the Almighty. I sing this song. I say this song every Shabbat at the coming in at the Shabbat. I do Psalms 92 and I do Psalms 145. Psalms 145 is one of my favorite songs of all time. Because the way it reads in Ivory is so beautiful. And when, when we get there, I hope I get a chance to do it. But brothers and sisters, these two psalms I bring in the Shabbat day with every Shabbat because in particular this one is the psalm for the Shabbat day. And Psalms 145 is just a psalm that just, it extols the greatness of the Almighty. And that's what it's about for the Shabbat day. So let's go. Psalm 92, a song for the Shabbat day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a good thing to give thanks unto Yehovah. Right. And to sing praises unto thy name of most high. So now they said that the Shabbat is supposed to be a delight, right? Amen. So when you talk about the Shabbat and this song for the Shabbat day, you have to give praise to the Almighty God. That's why in the morning when he says a song for the Shabbat day, Psalm 92, and we all supposed to be saying it, it is a good thing to give thanks unto Yehovah. This is a good thing, brothers and sisters, because guess what? Everybody didn't get this opportunity. Everybody didn't get this chance. Everybody don't know who God is to even give him praise. So the fact that you have the opportunity to praise Yah, you have to give him your all. Do not hold back. There are people out there in the world that are saying that they are the nation of Israel and they are diligent in what they do. They wake up early in the morning they say their prayers. They get there in the afternoon. They out there in the nighttime and they're saying that they're you and you're th being slack about who you are so you're not giving God the due that's, that, that he should be getting. So I don't take these things lightly. So when I have an opportunity, unless I have a sore throat, and unless I'm sick or something like that, I'm giving God praise. When I talk about it is a good thing to give thanks unto Yehovah. I don't want to be like, this is a good thing to give thanks unto Yehovah. No. It is a good thing to give thanks unto Yehovah. Because I have life. I have food. I have clothing. I have shelter. I have strength. Brothers and sisters, I work a lot of hours. And God gives me strength. If God gave me strength to go out there for them, you think when I come out here on Shabbat, I'm turning up. Because I was out there for 60, 70 hours already, 80 plus hours, 90 hours. I do overtime almost every day. So when I come here, I got to give God some praise and honor and respect because he gave me the strength to be able to do what I do, to take care of my family. That is a blessing, brothers and sisters. So when you get an opportunity to say, it is a good thing to give thanks unto Yehovah, don't miss it. Let's read. To declare thy love and kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness, faithfulness in, in the, the night seasons. seasons. With the instruments of ten strings and with the psaltery, with the solemn sound upon the harp. So the Most High God said, with the instrument of ten strings and with the psaltery and with the solemn sound upon the harp. And we don't have harps and we don't have things like that, but we have drums. 
and this is how we pray. We got guitars, we have saxophones, we have different instruments now, but I understand what the psalmist was saying when he said it, we had instruments to praise God. This is how we praise God. Those tambourines and those different instruments, praise God. Because that's what God is talking about with the instrument of ten strings and with the psaltery. Whatever your instrument of choice is, praise God with it. Make it sound good. And guess what? When we're all praying, playing together, it all sounds great. You got some sisters that might play the tambourine on beat. I see y'all. I can hear y'all. It's okay. But when we all playing together, it make it sound good. Because you might be going on the three and the four, or the one and the four, and the one and the three, and I'm on the two and the four. Well, that guy is bump, 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 bump. There you go. Now you got four beats. It's all about making music and making praise to the Almighty. Let's go. For thou, Yahweh, has made me glad through thy work. Right. I will exalt in the works of thy hands. I will exalt in the works of thy hands. What are the works of God's hands? The sun, the moon, the stars, the waters, the great seas, all the things that us. We are the works of the, of the hands of the Most High. Let's read. How great are thy works, O Yah? And thy thoughts. Are very deep. Uh -huh. A brutish man knoweth not, neither does a fool understand this. A fool don't understand this way of life, brothers and sisters. A fool don't even understand when somebody's giving him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. When the wicked spring up as the grass, mm -hmm. and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. I used to get mad when I see wicked people get go up and up and up and do things, and you're like, Most High, why are you letting the wicked prosper? But then you read something like this, it says, when the wicked spring up as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they may be destroyed. So God does things for his own reason. We can't get mad. You just got to sit back and make sure that you doing right so that you don't get swept away with the wicked. Let's read. But thou, Yah, art on high forevermore. Evermore. For low down enemies of Yehovah, for low down enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall, shall be scattered. scattered. But my horn thou... But my horn has thou exalted like, like the, the horn, horn of the wild ox. I am anointed with rich oil. Right. Mine eye also hath gazed on them that lie in wait for me. Mine ears have heard the desire of the, of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous hold shall... Hold on, hold on. Say that again. I must read 12 again. My eye also had... My eye also had gazed on them that lie and wait for me. Mm -hmm. My ears have heard the desire of the evil doers that rise up against me. Think about that for a second, brothers and sisters. My eye have also gazed on them that lie and wait for me, and my ears have heard my desire of the evil doers that rise up against me. You ever had somebody talking bad about you at work? <laughs> you ever had somebody talking bad about you at work? And you find out? Y'all know yesterday I was at work. And there's a sea of us, all of our people, right? And with a sprinkle of the other kind, a little sprinkle. So I go in now. I'm at a place that I don't know. I don't normally work there. I'm just doing overtime. So I walk in or whatever. I walk in in my regular self. My kippah's on my head. So we go through whatever, and then we get dismissed to go out. I go out. The sister comes to me. She says, hey, brother, how you doing? I'm like, what's up, sis? She's like, yo, you turned them people upside down. I said, what people? I said, I ain't know what's going on. What happened? She said, when you walked in and they saw your head cover, they was all upset. I said, really? I said, well, why you didn't tell me in there so I could turn up in there? Because I love a good opportunity to turn up. She said, nah, I didn't want to, I ain't want to tell you. You look like you about that business. I said, yeah, I would have told them off. The wicked talking about me and I don't even know it. And then the most high revealed it to me. So then, on the afternoon tip, when it's time to go back, oh, oh, oh. hey, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Everybody good? Ah, I heard y'all was talking about my head cover. Let me tell y'all about my head cover. It's called the keeper. This is a, I'm an Israelite. I said, I, I observe the Sabbath. So I said, so if you have any questions, please come, come forward and ask any questions you might have about my head cover. Crickets. But, my horn has to exalt like the horn of the white ox. I am anointed with rich oil. My eye also have gazed on them that lie in wait for me, and my ears have heard my desire of the evil doers that rise up against me. When you're on the most high side, and when God is on your side, they can't touch you. They are scared of you. 
That's why they mumble. Yeah, keep those murmurings to yourself. Let me tell you something. I'm a, I'm a strong Israelite. You're not going to scare me out of here. I'll be the only one in here. For, for years, I was the only black person in my precinct. For years. And the Most High God allowed me to flourish like Yosef. And guess what? I used to pray that prayer. Yah caused me to flourish like you made Yosef flourish in Egypt. Everywhere I go, they get blessed. That's not coincidence. That's not coincidence. Yah, everywhere I go, let them flourish and let them know it is because of you. Oh, this is, this. we're doing great in this, we're doing great in this, we're doing great in this. What's the deciding factor, Israel? When I left the other spot, the other spot went down. Why? Israel left. You got to put yourself in that mind frame. I'm telling you that God is watching over us. And if you get into something where you offend the most high God, ask God for forgiveness so he could get you back on track. You take some bumps and bruises. You take some punishments. But you got to understand that it's not the white man that's punishing you. You're doing something the contrary to God. God is showing you something. Get back right with God and God is going to bless you again. I took some bumps and bruises, brothers and sisters, but I'm telling you that the creator lifted me right back up where I needed to be because I called on him and I said, Yah, help me. And he did. So when you out there and you wearing your fringes and you rocking your keep pole and your long skirts and your head wraps, just know they talking about you. But they don't know what to say. But God is good, brothers and sisters. And guess what, brothers and sisters? Take that opportunity. Somebody might really want to talk to you about why, why you're doing what you're doing. This way of life. Do not shun them. Come here, brother. Come here, sister. Let me tell you about who God is. And the Shabbat day and all the different things that we do. Had a young brother after that funeral who said, Come, yo, brother, can you teach me how to pray? I said, absolutely. Here's my number. Brother called me the next day, ready. Listen, I, I just want to know what to say to God. You got you to gotta understand, we are blessed. We're supposed to be a light to the nations. People look at you and they say, man, look how he's dressed. Look how she's dressed. You think you're going to walk into Walmart like that near Kava and nobody ain't going to say nothing to you? They're going to be like, yeah, following you. Look at this sister. She's not a Muslim. She's not of this. She's not of that. We got to figure this out. Hey, sister, where'd you... They start off light. Hey, where'd you get those clothes from? <laughs> they start off light. Hey, brother, where'd you get that, that, hat, that, that hat? They call it a hat. Where'd you get that hat from? That's a nice hat. Who's walking around with a Knicks keeper? You don't think people want to know what that's about? <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what it, we represent. Yeah, we fans, but we represent. It's a keeper. Oh, how do you get that? Where you get that from? What do you mean? Because you got to be careful out there too. Because now the young boys is out there wearing keepo. And they're wearing it for gang activity. So you got to be careful. They're wearing it because they know that, oh, the brothers with the keepers don't get touched. They not silly. They not stupid. They know what's up. See the young man, yo, why you got that on? What you, what you doing? Oh, nah, I just like it. Nah, you, they figure that. You won't get stopped as much if you got this on your head. Y'all got to be careful. We got to be careful. That's why when I see young men wearing keeper, I'm happy. But then I'm like, what are you into? <laughs> you doing what you're supposed to do? No, you got to ask. You got to talk to these young men and young women. All of a sudden, you wearing keeper. You wasn't wearing keeper before, but they out there wearing keeper now. So you got to be careful. Talk to your young men. Talk to your young sisters. Make sure they're not into nothing that they're not supposed to be into. Let's read some more. Let's finish it out. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. That's what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. The righteous shall flourish. We're going to flourish like the palm tree. That's If you're righteous, you're going to flourish. If you're not righteous, you won't flourish. That's just simple. Planted in the house of Yah, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall, sting, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be full of sap and richness to declare that Yahweh is upright. He is my rock in whom there is no unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, and I can tell you a little bit about this. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. My Abba was always old to me. Always old to me. And I got four little sisters under me. When you talk about bringing forth fruit in old age, the Most High God could do anything. As long as you're doing that which is right before him, he will bless you. There's no age limit. 
There's no, listen, sisters, may the most high God bless you all. If you're going through something, whether it's you feel like you're barren, pray to the most high God. There's no age limit that the most high God can't handle. Don't let them dictate to you what your age is when you could have a child or when you can't have a child. Y'all, do y'all know who Sarah was? And I know we think, oh, that was olden days. God is still God. When God wants you to have a child, God will make you have a child. There is no age limit. There is no time um, restraint on the Most High God's powers, brothers and sisters. Don't put yourself in that mind frame. If the Most High wants you to have it, the Most High God would allow you to have it. But you have to continue to call on him and ask him for the things that you need. Brothers and sisters alike, call on God. Call on this God. This is your cheat code, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Most High God bless us all and keep us all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, Nicole.